Broadcasting in Uganda dates back to 1952 with the birth of Radio Uganda as a product of cable and wireless, a British company that controlled broadcasts in the colonies. Radio Uganda was only limited to Kampala and also technologically primitive broadcasting interests of the colonial masters. It was there to promote government interests. And the interests at that time were mainly what? Health, education, and tourism, uh, maybe coffee, cotton, and the likes. A year into independence, Ugandans incorporated television, whose idea was born in the colonial times, but discredited as expensive and not practical. Within a year, we saw the role of television in uh, informing the public, entertaining our people, and also promoting our culture. Born just a year into independence, Uganda Television had 90% foreign programs and Awari's first task was to Africanize the programming and promote government interests too. That came with challenges. Number one, technology. How to reach the people. Two, how would the people receive their message. A television was not a cheap item to own in a home. It came with all its implications, challenges. Number one, electricity. Number two, the cost. And number three, the program that would entertain people the way they wanted. Mm. Uh, the last part of it was the question of how does television or radio influence the public? Years into independence, technological advancement improved with the setting of medium wave band and short wave. Fast forward. With various governments coming into play and a liberalized economy, the media has maintained a vital role in informing, educating and entertaining the nation. <laughs> Hundreds of radio stations and tens of television stations have sprung up. A sidelined private sector by the state media coupled with growing advanced and cheaper technology like the internet have given rise to private media houses. People have seen it's a medium where you can communicate to people through both picture and sound. But then the thing is, what are we promoting? What, wh why are we opening television? What, what, are, what is our vision? What's the mission? Most television stations today are just there, opened up to, you find it, but the moment you switch on any station, politics, politics, politics. Development communication is not there. However, a worry says, this has stemmed from political parties not owning media houses. You have full control of the content. Number two, you determine the pace of development. Number three, you can shape the thinking of the public the way your party policies are. In spite of all the challenges of the changing times and needs of society, just how much can the media's performance be evaluated it is a far better informed and informing media than it ever used to be. There are some very, very good writers and some very good uh, people that I see on television and listen to on radio. I know they're very ambitious journalists, very ambitious young people who are interested in making a mark for themselves. But in making that mark, some of them are stepping overboard. In the past, you went to journalism as a failure. You, to be a reporter, it means you didn't make it on all levels. But now you find people with degrees, like yourself, in, in communications. That is good. And as the technological advancement continues upgrading in the current digital space, Social media has posed a challenge to the mainstream media outlets. The morality value of it is very low. Competition and the quest to take the greater share of the audience has continuously bathed innovation and better service delivery. Mildred Tohaise, NBS, live at 9.